Okay, Ezra chapter 1. It's the first book of the post-captivity book. After Israel's been taken into Judah and taken to uh, Babylon. After the Babylon, that's post-captivity. When Israel's ready to go back, you'll find Ezra, Nehemiah, Esther, Haggai, Zechariah, and Malachi record the return of the Jewish people. Now we're going from 2 Chronicles to... Ezra chapter 1 in our Bibles. But we got some of Jeremiah. Jeremiah records post. Uh, I mean, during the captivity. Ezekiel is during the captivity. Daniel is during the captivity. The exile. Chapter 1, verse 1. This is 70 years later. From chapter 36. The Lord told me to be there for 70 years. Now the first year of Cyrus, king of Persia, that the word of the Lord by the mouth of Jeremiah, that's inspiration, might be fulfilled. So here comes, here comes fulfilled prophecy spoken by Jeremiah. The Lord stirred up the spirit of Cyrus, king of Persia, a Gentile king. God works through this king. That he made a proclamation throughout all his kingdom. And put it also in writing. So it's not just all verbally said. This is a writing. And it'll be important writing that will show up later. So Jeremiah now, according to Ezra, which Jeremiah already in his book, because he, he preached and prophesied that Judah would go into captivity, which is true. He's a prophet that is a true prophet. Amongst prophets who were false. Thus saith Cyrus king of Persia. The Lord God. Well that's kind of interesting for a, for a Gentile man in the Old Testament. The Lord God. That's Jehovah. That's the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. That's not a God of Easter. That's not a God of Ishtar. That's not, it's not a fallen God. Cyrus acknowledges the Lord God. Not that only. Of heaven. So the God that sits in heaven. Has given me all the kingdoms of the earth. I didn't get them by might. I didn't get them by strength. God gave them to me. And he has charged me. This is the order. He has charged me to build him a house at Jerusalem. Which is in Judah. The temple has been destroyed. It's gone. It, it's rubble. God spoke to Cyrus, say, listen, the 70 days are up. I mean, 70 years are up. My people are going to go back and build that temple. I'm putting in you as their king to go do it. And he obeyed. Pharaoh, in the book of Exodus, I want you to let my people go. No. Water turns to blood. No, I'm not doing it. The frogs. No, I'm not doing it. The lice. Not doing it. Your, your crops die. No, not doing it. Your beasts die. The children of Israel's beasts die are okay. No, not doing it. Cyrus, go have them go back home. I'll do it. I'll do it. Now this is the, this is Cyrus speaking. Who is there among you of all his people, the Jewish people? Israelites. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. He's a, addressing the Jewish, the Hebrew people. His God be with him. God, the God I'm talking about, the God I'm listening, the God I have honored, is the God of the Jews, he's saying, his God. Among his people, his God, that's Jewish. He doesn't have a Gentile God, he has the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That's the God of the Bible. His God be with him, and let him go up to Jerusalem. Who is there among you, his people, his God be with him, and let him go, the Jewish people. Let God be with you as you go, which is in Judah, and build the house of the Lord God of Israel. Again, the Israel God. Now watch this little parenthesis, a special important note of Cyrus. He is the, the God. That's Cyrus saying that. He is the God. 
He is the God of the Jewish people. His place is Jerusalem of the children of Judah. And he's the Lord God. And he's the God that sits in the heavens. I would be safely assumed that when we get the glory and after the great white throne judgment, I would assume that Cyrus's name is in the Lamb's book of life and he won't be cast off in the lake of fire that burns forever. Look at look at look at the profession. Which is in Jerusalem. What God? The God in Jerusalem. You know how many gods were in Jerusalem before him? I mean, there was Baal, there was Balaam, there's Asterisk, there's all fallen gods, all this. I mean, they were worshiping every single god and altars we read. <coughs> Excuse me, in Second Chronicles. Of all those gods and all those altars and all those uh, groves and everything going on, Cyrus says, that god is my god. That god is your god. And he's preaching to the Jewish people. That God is your God. And this is what's going on to the book of Acts. All right. They believe God is God in the book of Acts. But it's going one step closer to say Jesus is God. Jesus is the Messiah. And whosoever remaineth in any place. You'll find that in Esther 1. 1 you don't go to Jerusalem. And as far as we know, Daniel did not go. And there's a lot of speculation. Daniel stayed behind. I don't know. I have no idea. I'm not even going to make any references to why he did or did not go. When we read Ezra and Nehemiah, we don't see Daniel's name. He stays behind, but this is the proclamation for him, like and Shadrach, Meshach, and Indigo. He might have been so old. He might have been, like I said. I mean, they were there for 70 years, and he was. Yes. And there's a people, man yeah, because there's just so many things out there. He wasn't feeling well. And I, I don't know what it is, but for Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Hugo, here we go. A any place where he sojourneth, wherever they live, let the men of his place where you decide to stay help him with silver, with gold, and with goods, and with beasts. All right, stop right there for a moment. All right, so Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Hugo probably helped the people with something to go back to Jerusalem. What? I don't know. So those Jews that did not go, there were some Jews that had their heart to go. There are people, people should, they don't go to church because they can't. Legitimately can't. They can't see the drive to go. They go Sunday morning, but they can't go Sunday night at midweek because they can't see the drive. They can't go to church because it's too far. It, there's limitations of their body. There are people here legitimately that they cannot go back. And the King Cyrus said, do what you can to help. Are you going to call and so you've got to be in church? And the guy's sitting in a nursing home. He's got a bracelet on his leg. He can't go out. What can that guy do in the nursing home? He can pray. And when somebody comes in, he says, listen, this is a few pennies I've got. That's all I've got. When you go to church, put that in the plate for me. Listen, that little that widow's mite gave two, that widow gave her two mites. And Jesus Christ was pleased with it. Not everybody can do. There are limitations. Proper limitation that I don't think God's gonna, you know, at the judgment seat of Christ, oh, I can't give reward because you didn't go Sunday night. But the fact is, you had no method to go Sunday night, your heart was there. So, there are some people who can't. Now, if you're able to go and you don't, that's a different story. So, free besides the free will offering, free will is what you gave to God, free will. Help the people travel back to Jerusalem and give them, when they get to Jerusalem, give your free will offering to God. So when they establish that tabernacle and they establish the temple and the altar, they can offer your burnt offering. So not only does he say, get, go, he says, go, build, and sacrifice, and let the Jewish people help. That's a Gentile king. Besides the free will offering for the house, of God that is in Jerusalem. You listen, when you build that temple, get there, you're going to offer God free will offerings. But thank you, Lord God.
So that would be thank you offerings too. Thank offerings. Sin offerings. Then rose up the chief of the fathers of Judah and Benjamin. These are the heads. And the priests and the Levites. Again, all, all priests are Levites. Not all Levites are priests. With all that them whose spirit God had raised. God is now working with the king, and God is working with the priests, and God's working with, with the Levites, God's working with the leaders of the people in, in, of the Jewish people in Babylon. God is like, go. And it's hard to explain when the Bible tells me go in all in the world and preach the gospel. It's that spirit of the Lord say, go, and I go. And it's a remarkable spirit when you obey God had raised to go up to build the house of the Lord, which is in Jerusalem. So Ezra sets forth the temple building. Nehemiah will set forth the walls of Jerusalem. Don't get them confused. And all they that were about them strengthened their hands with vessels of silver and gold, with goods, with beasts, and with precious things, Besides all that was willingly offering. That's a free will. So they're in chapter one, they're packing up, they're getting everything, they're getting going. And everybody, even if you're not going, everybody's helping. Also, Cyrus the king brought forth the vessels of the house of the Lord, which Nebuchadnezzar had brought forth out of Jerusalem and had put in a put them in the house of his God. Look at Second Chronicles 36, verse 7, real quick. And this is the first time, but every each of the time, Nebuchadnezzar is taking something. Nebuchadnezzar also carried away the vessels of the house of the Lord to Babylon and put them in his temple at Babylon. Then uh, verses 10 on, he's taking things. And verse 15 on, he has three different accounts. He comes in and everything he has grabbed from the house of the Lord. He doesn't destroy it. He doesn't melt it. He puts them in his temple. Well, that, next time you're going to hear about them is in Daniel when Belshazzar says, let's get all this stuff and let's have a big commode. And I say commode because at that point, that night, Babylon's flushed down the toilet. It's almost like God said, okay, just have accountability. Just get it ready because it's not staying here. And Cyrus has opened up the temple in Babylon and said, there's your stuff. Go get it. It's all there. Even those that Cyrus the king of Persia bring forth by the hand of Mithrathadath, the treasurer. There's only two times that shows up. That's the first place. And the only place is Isaiah 22, 14. Treasurer. Here's a guy that King Cyrus... You are in charge of all that. If anything is lacking, you're going to have to give an account. And number them in Shazabar. Shazabar. The place. The prince. Oh, wait, no, that's not a place. It's a person. And number them unto Shazabar, the prince of Judah. It's hard to tell these names. And this is the number of them. Now, if you don't think God's going to count for anything, watch what God's going to do. And there, this is the number of 30 charges of gold. Okay. A thousand charges of silver. We got charges of gold and silver. God says count. Nine and 20 knives. 29 knives. You better believe with what you've given God for time, money, and effort. He's recording it. And what you use time, money, and effort for foolishness and for sin, he's recording. God's a great bookkeeper. And, and for those that are lost, he says, and their works will be judged. Revelation 20, the great white throne judgment. He records the works. And you know what he says about the last of the scene, church age? He said, you know, you're rich, you're poor, I recorded that. You're wonderful and great, I recorded that. But you're blind, miserable, naked. God's a great recorder. 30 basins of gold, silver basins of a second sort, I don't know what a second sort is, 410, and other vessels a thousand. 
All the vessels of gold and of silver were 5,400. All these his ships, Bezer, bring up with them of the captivity that were brought up from Babylon into Jerusalem. So this guy's job is, this is the treasurers. It's your responsibility. Take them to Jerusalem. 